record. Okay, I am recording this session. So if I if you miss anything, just know that you can um, go back to the mathematician website and that recording will be there in the next couple of days. So we're going to start out with number sense. Number sense is a huge, huge, it is all math is. And it starts as early as 4K um, and really before that. But we want to have for them to have a sense of five when they leave. 4K and 5K. And it's not just being able to rote count one, two, three, four, five. It is being able to fully understand what's one more, what's one less. One of the questions that we probably, and I say this because I did it at home too, is asking our students, what's the next number? Well, what's the next number leads them to think if I'm just rote counting what number they would recall next. But we want them to understand what's one more than the number they're currently on. So one of the things you want to make sure they do is call one to one correspondence and it's to be able to touch their counters as they are counting. So one, two, three, and then you might ask the question, what's one more than three? They may can just tell you four and add the fourth one. They may have to go back and count one, two, three, four to get that. That is fine. That is part of the progression, but we want to get them to just automatically know that four is one more than three. And then you would ask again, what's one more than four? And it would be five. You can even if you are at home and you have beans or pennies or buttons, anything that they can count with. It doesn't have to be these two sided counters. You will get some of these in your manipulative kit. But it doesn't have to be these. Um, but if you have something that is different, let's say um, with my daughter, sometimes I use her Shopkins just because we have them in abundance. Um, those might be different, you know, or if you're using Legos and you use the same color Legos and you might show a different one, um, or that fifth one or whatever number as a different color so they can just visually see that is four and one more is five. Um, you're going to ask the question, what is less? Less is harder for them as a learner. Um, it's harder for them with the word less. We always talk about more. We want more milk. We want more candy. We want more of this or that. But less is, is a harder vocabulary word for them. So use that a good bit to keep um, to get them more accustomed to that. But you might say, what is less than one? You want them to be able to talk about zero because zero is a number. It does have the value of nothing. And sometimes that is hard for them too. You know, ask them. What's in your hand? It's zero. What's actually there? Nothing. So you can ask questions like that because they need to know how to sense of that zero too, because zero is going to be powerful. And if you ask your kids about zero, the hero, that's me, um, every 10th day of school when I got to visit them yesterday. But um, they need to know that, that zero is powerful because it's going to play a big part in number sense um, through the years. So you might have two up here and say, well, what is one less than two? And let them show you, making sure they're touching it as they're counting it and they can say one. The goal here is for them to truly understand what's one less than two, one more than two, one less than three, one more than four, more than four, so on and so forth. But you want them not only to be able to count because a lot of times they'll come to 4K and they'll count one, two, three, four, five. Um, and we think, gosh, they're, they're great at counting, but that's just the rote counting. We want them to truly understand how these numbers work and have that number sense. As time moves on and you're here in 4K, just having the sense of five, then you're gonna, it's gonna move gradually into a sense of addition. So you might change your questions up to say, what is two and one more? And so then this is gonna transition them into some addition and having that fluency of five to say two and one is three or two plus one is three. So you could do a series of this. And here it would be kind of helpful for them to have different objects to represent these numbers just so they could see what they're adding. You might build them up to what is two, or excuse me, three and two more. I know three and two is five. And you want to give them this five frame to work with because that gives them a visual of where those counters are going to go. And in their mind, it sticks better versus you just have it down here. And we're going to talk about 
another part, and that's supertized, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But that's a five frame, and you want them to know this up one side and down the other because the next progression is going to be a sense of 10 with a 10 frame. Let me check to make sure there's no one in the waiting room. Just one second. I'm going to stop share for one minute. Right, so the next step in the progression is going to be a sense of 10. Just like with a sense of five, you want them to have a sense of 10. So using this 10 frame now, you're moving from working with five to now working up to 10. Same thing, what is one more? What is one less? What is two more? What is two less? All this is building them up to have that fluency for addition and subtraction. Um, again, less is hard. So keep asking them the word less. More comes more fluid for them than less does. Or what is lesser? Just use that vocabulary. So here is six. What is two more than six? Eight. What is two less than eight? Six. And have them move these in and out as you go. Um, this sense of five, I mean, excuse me, the sense of 10 really starts in, um, Kindergarten, just understanding these numbers. In first grade, it's where it's gonna to move to being able to manipulate um, this 10 frame to add and subtract and find them that sense of 10 and be able to make a 10. But um, that comes in first grade. So there's a progression with this. In kindergarten, one through 10 is fairly easy, especially if they come with a sense of five from 4K already established. The teen numbers, can be difficult for our kindergarten students. They're said differently. You know, there's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So they're said differently, but it's harder for them to transition that counting until they get that pattern under their belt. So you would fill a 10 frame. And then ask them questions like, what is 10? because this is already filled. And what you want them to do is to understand when they see this 10 frame without having to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, each time they count a number, you want them to automatically look at this and be able to know that it's 10. That comes with time. That's not going to come right off the bat, but that comes with time if you've practiced this 10 frame enough. Then ask them questions. What is 10 and one more? So they have 11. Some of them will still need to go back and count one through 10 and to get the 11. You want them to be able to say that's 10, one more is 11. Um, eventually you want to transition this to be one group of 10 because that's gonna come into place value for first grade. Um, but this is 10 and two more. And we're not really talking about this from an addition perspective that comes more in first grade but you want to have this number sense going on. So you might not, you might not say to them, what is 10 plus two? You might say, what is 10 and two more or 10 and three more? So they notice there's a 10 there and here's three. And you want them to notice this 10 because that's gonna be in the place value um, when they go into first grade, okay? So with this comes, um, let me check my, make sure I'm staying on track. Um, comes adding and subtracting. Now they do add, and they're going to add fluently in kindergarten through five. But you can use a 10 frame. I'm going to take my double 10 frame away. Um, and you're going to move to three and two. What is three and two? Okay. So they can see that they have put three here and put two here, and that is five. Um, have them clear their frame, and when they're reading the word problem or you're reading a word problem to them, have them act this out. Word problems are can be tricky at all grade levels, but if you will start at home by saying, there are two dogs at the park, three dogs join them, how many dogs are at the park? And then you can have them repeat the story to you. So even if 
you have homework and it says two plus three, create a story up for it because it sticks in their head better or have them create the story. There are two yellow birds and three um, red birds. How many birds are there in all? If you create the story, have them repeat it to you in their own words um, and it just sticks with their, in their head better. And then they could write the equation two plus three equals five. Um, right now, kindergarten is working on this. Um, they will eventually work up to 10, but they are working on just five right now. Let's keep going. All right, with subtraction. Subtraction is a little different and harder for them because they have to think of the whole number and then take away part of it. So I'm gonna change up my counters just so that you can see we can use a variety of counters. Um, and so what you'll find too, maybe the, maybe the two-sided counters aren't working for your child, switch it up. Um, they get bored with things just like we do. So um, you can switch it up to any of the counters you have. You don't have little trinkets like this at home. You can use beans, pennies, buttons, anything that they can tangibly touch. Okay, so subtraction. I see these are camels, I'm pretty sure, yes, these are camels. There are five camels at the zoo to walk away and have it physically and have them walk this away, how many are left? There are three camels left at the zoo. Have them talk through it and put it in their words and act it out. Um, so like I had my camels walking away, two camels run to play. Three plus two is five. So have them act this out and saying those words, take away, left, how many in all, um, will help with their um, knowledge of adding and subtracting. Any questions so far? I'm gonna stop share so I can see you guys. Do I have any questions up to this point? If you can, if there's anything that I can suggest to you, is have them have that number sense. That number sense plays a part in the rest of the things that they do in math, um, especially when they get into place value in first grade and beyond. All right, so I'm going to switch now to a number line, and this is just another resource tool that um, you can use. I'm going to share my screen again. So another um, way to help students identify where they're working and what number they're on is to use a number line. The number's there for them. There's a spot for them to place an object and they can see the progression as it grows. So of course my number line starts with zero because we cannot forget the zero is there and then have them physically put these counters in the boxes. Um, some students still struggle with actually recognizing the number. So a number line helps them say, okay, I count one, two, three, four, I see that number four, I say the number four, I'm touching four objects, this helps them connect better. Then ask the same questions, what's one more than four? And have them say the number five. Ideally, you want them to say five automatically because part of the kindergarten standard is knowing that this is a group of five without having to go back and recount. Um, what's two more than five? Six, seven. If you're using this number line for adding, they can do the strategy of counting on. So let's say our number is three plus two. I know that I had three to start with. I'm going to count on four, five, and know that that's five. Some of them will have to go back and count, and that's fine. That's part of the process. But we want to rec get them to recognize this is ultimately five altogether. And then you can go all the way up to 10. So in 4K, if your child's not there yet, of course, for the adding part, use this number line for them to have a spot for their number. They're recognizing the number and they're saying the number. Um, you'll also get a number line in your kit that'll come home to you. Next, I want to skip to subitizing. All right, subitizing. <laughs> this is a word that people are like, what is, does that mean? Subitizing is a, when you're able to see a set of objects, these will be circles in this case, 
and quickly give you the amount without having to physically count them. And so when you show subitized, you'll show it quick and take it away and ask your child, how did, what, what did you see? How did you see that? So for example, I quickly show this, I take it away, um, ask your child, how did you see this? Well, I saw that there were five. I saw two and three. Eventually this is gonna work up to adding. But right now in 4K and 5K, you want this to be strictly number sent. These are just um, paper plates that I used yard sale stickers on to make um, these subitizing cards. Um, like when you're playing a game and you're rolling dice, having them quickly be able to see that that is one through six on that die. Um, what you will see them starting to do is they'll either be pointing in the air um, or their head will be bobbing as they count these. And that's fine, that's where they start, but we want to do this in a quick fashion to where they quickly see this as five and keep going. Um, you might have them where it's two, two colored dots and this is moving in more to the addition, um, but it's real quick, just so they're seeing different formations. I would do one through five um, before you move into through 10, just so they have that sense of five but you'll be getting a box of subitizing cards with your kit. These are just some I have made years ago. Um, so if you don't, have, maybe you want to practice and you don't have your subitizing cards, you can just quickly make them on note cards or paper plates or something um, that will help. Um, next, we're going to look at our number line, not our number line, excuse me, our hundreds chart. Um, in kindergarten, they, their goal is to be able to count to 100. They're not going to be representing them with tens and ones, but they should be able to recognize up through 100 um, in kindergarten. This is a great way to have them physically touch and count each of these numbers. Um, this is a great way for them to see patterns. So if they're counting by tens, which they do in kindergarten, you can see what's happening and ask your child, what do you notice? Maybe you had them circle all the tens. What do you notice about these numbers? Well, they may say, well, I noticed there's a zero. Um, and then they don't have to know place value in kindergarten, but if your child's ready for that, well, that zero is in the ones place. What do you notice about this other digit in the number? What's happening to that number? Well, they might say, I see one through 10. They may say, well, it's getting bigger. What we want them to notice is that number when we progress down 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, so on and so forth, it's getting larger. You could ask them, well, how much larger? Um, just, so just asking those probing questions so that they have something to think about. Um, obviously, if, we, if your child just needs help counting, you are going to start just by counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. To make sure they truly understand it, you can pull out your number line, or your five and 10 frames, have them physically make that number. Um, with this hundreds chart, you can say, well, what is one more than 15, well, 16? What is two more than 87, 89? So having that true understanding of what's happening with these numbers. Um, you also wanna make sure that when you are counting that you don't always start at one. They do it every nine weeks. So the first nine weeks, they do through 25, second nine weeks through 50, third nine weeks through 75, and then the fourth nine weeks through 100 um, is their goal, but that they can count on from any given number so that you ask them, start counting at 54, and then have them count through whatever number you ask them to stop at. That way it's not always back to one, um, and that you know they have that understanding of numbers that, hey, I can count on from 87 and go all the way to 100. That's harder for them, making sure they can count one to 100 um, by themselves. Um, well, like I said, they do not need to know like how many tens, like nine tens and six ones. They do not need to know that until first grade, but if your child's ready for that, you can talk about how the number 96 has nine groups of 10 and six ones by building that with rods and ones or drawing it. Um, but that is not a kindergarten standard that comes in first. Um, the next thing we wanna talk about, and it goes back to this number sense again, is comparing numbers. 
So if I ask a child, tell me what you know about the numbers five and three. First of all, they can build it. There's five and three. A common misconception, they might say, well, they're different. They're gonna wanna say, well, they're, they're different. These are camels, these are counters. They might look at this group and say, well, the camels are bigger because they're bigger animals. Um, or they might say this three is smaller because they're smaller in physical size. What you want them to make sure you're doing with them is that they can physically tell you what the difference is in the amounts that are there. So this is three. It is smaller because it is two times smaller than five. Or five is larger because there are two more there. And if they can't, if they have a hard time understanding that, have them pull them out of the circle and have them physically match them up. That way they can see, oh, you can't see that, sorry. Um, have them physically match them up so that they can see, well, this is the same, here's the same, here's the same, but I have more camels. So they can see what's happening and they can play this out. Um, there are two more camels than the counters, or there are two less counters than camels. Less is, again, it's hard for them to have them use that vocabulary. Um, you also want them to understand equal to. So there are two in one set and two in another set. Two is equal to two. Um, they will also hear the vocabulary. Two is the same as two. And that's the vocabulary that they will hear in kindergarten as well. Um, I would suggest you just take a piece of paper when they're comparing numbers and draw in the sets. It just gives them a visual of where to put those counters. This also can turn into addition. Um, have them tell you a story. There are four camels in one pen. There are three camels in the other pen. How many camels in all? And then have them touch, being able to count those, or they could count on. They know there's four here. And there's three more here. So four is here, five, six, seven. Um, obviously, they can use their fingers when they are adding and subtracting. We want to make sure that um, we are building them up to be able to do that mentally and just having those conversations. What is three more than four? What is three less than four? And so on and so forth. Um, I am going to show you. Some patterns next. Um, most kids come to kindergarten having a good understanding, or 4K, having a good understanding of patterns, because patterns are in the world around us. Um, but what patterns ultimately leads us to is to the understanding of numbers and how numbers grow by one. When we're counting by fives, they grow by fives. When we count by tens, they grow by tens. So that's ultimately where patterns um, is going. So um, you might have a pattern of a yellow blue. They might say yellow camel, blue camel, um, whatever the object is. But ask them, what comes next in our pattern? What do you know? So you might get this pattern started for them. I can get my pattern, right? So yellow, blue, yellow, blue. You might ask them, well, what comes next in our pattern? We have a yellow. What's, what else is our pattern? So we have re repeating pattern here, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, okay? And then ask them, how do they know? How do you know that that yellow and blue came next? Well, I know that I started with a yellow and then I had a blue, then it went to yellow, blue, yellow, blue. So you want to ask them questions all throughout their learning so they can justify their thinking to you because this, this is gonna give us several different pieces of information. It's gonna tell you if they know it, if they don't, it's also gonna tell you maybe their answer they put down was wrong, but their process they went to get there was right. So for example, if they say um, five plus three is seven, but they could tell you I had five and I had three, 
but they miscounted. So it may not be that they don't understand how to do it at all. It could be that they just don't understand. Um, they, they don't realize that they miscounted. A lot of times, if it's not lined up nice and pretty, and what they're counting is all jumbled up here, and they are saying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. They're not counting each one individually. So if you notice that that's happening, have them physically pick it up and move it so it's out of the way. So they're touching it and they're moving it to a different spot. That way they can count it there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. That way it is less likely to have more errors there. If you are working on a worksheet and I ready um, does this, it'll ask them for sets. And let's say it has five in a set and they're comparing sets. Sometimes they will have, um, they're not able to count these, but when it's like this, and if it's something they can write on, especially have them mark it off as they are counting it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If it's on a computer game, um, have them physically touch the screen and start from a left to the right pattern um, motion so they can count those without um, miscounting. Miscounting is um, a big era in kindergarten because they get to doing it so quick. But if you use your tools like a five frame, a 10 frame, a number line, and have them physically pick up and move them and count them, you have less miscounting happening. All right. So I've gone through that super quick. Let me just stop and see if anybody has any questions. I'm going to stop my share. Which one's on here? All right. Does anybody have any questions? Anybody have seen something their child is doing at home that may have been a problem and you need help on how to correct it? Or they're just not able to retain that number? Um, the amount, the value, saying the number, seeing the number, and recognizing it. Anyone having any of those kind of troubles at home you might can help with? I'm going to show you, this is not on the, um, the agenda, but since we have time, I am going to show you what the part, part, whole looks like that will help with subtraction. They do a lot of this in first grade, but will also be very beneficial with subtraction in kindergarten. I'm going to share my screen again. All right, so this is a part, part, whole. Um, I'll include this. Let me make a note to include this in your packet. So in the part, part, whole with subtraction, we're thinking about that whole, which is hard for them to transition back and forth and what that part is. So I'm looking at seven minus three. Again, you wanna put this into story format. So there are seven, ducks in the pond three leave the pond how many are there so when we're starting here this seven is my whole number a lot of, let me back up to a misconception a lot of times um, when we are working with subtraction they will want to draw this seven and draw the three and then subtract well that's going to give them too many and their answers are going to be incorrect each time so when we're talking about subtraction we want to make sure that we are looking at this whole number when we are drawing it or using our counters for it, and then we are taking away this part. So if here's my hole and up top, let me label these for it. Here's my hole, which is seven, and I'm gonna take away a part, okay? So I've taken away my part. So there are seven ducks at the pond, three fly away, how many are left? So when you're using this part, part, whole model, we've got to tell them that both of these parts come from this whole. So this is our part that is left. 
So they can, when they add, and this will go into adding two. So I see three and four, that's seven. So we want to take from our whole. And this is the part we're taking away, taking away the three, and then we're left with the four. Um, you can, if you don't have this mat right in front of you and have paper plates at home, the one um, that is in three sections works great because there's the bigger section to represent the whole. And then there's the two smaller sections to represent the parts. We want to talk about when we are um, subtracting, we don't want to just say automatically that, well, you're going to start with the largest number and then your numbers can get smaller. Do enough problems so that they can figure out and ask, well, what did you notice when we were subtracting? Well, I noticed that I started with my bigger number and I took a small part away and then I was left with a, with a part. So sometimes as teachers and parents, we want to automatically tell them what's going to happen. Um, like you're going to subtract from the largest number without letting them kind of figure that out on their own and grapple with it a little bit. Um, I did a PD last week with teachers and as teachers, we struggle to watch our students struggle. Um, but sometimes it takes that productive struggle for them to be able to come to a knowledge on their own and that's okay. Um, I know when we get home from work, we just wanna get the answer and go. But um, if we have the, just a couple extra minutes to kind of let them think through it themselves and come up with the answer on their own, it, um, it's very helpful for them retaining the information. Um, just like this, if they figure out on their own, well, it has to come from the largest number they're going to understand that more and longer with, than if we just told them that each time. Um, any questions about this? I'll stop the share. I don't have this on our agenda, um, but another thing that they do in kindergarten is going to be um, geometry um, that is talking about shapes, the shapes that are around us in the world. So if you are, riding down the road if you're sitting at a restaurant waiting to eat you know ask them what shapes they notice around them um square circles and rectangles and triangles are the ones they focus on in kindergarten you know understanding that those are flat shapes they're two-dimensional shapes um they have corners which we also call vertices they have sides they have angles so ask those type of questions when they see shapes around them um, and that will help them as well. Um, other things that they're gonna do in kindergarten with math is, um, we'll see, we've got patterns, number sense, cubes, geometry, um, word problems. They will have word problems, word problems are hard. So make sure when you just see those, what we call as naked numbers, um, that you put that into a word problem form. So that went a lot quicker than um, I had planned for, but is there anything you would like for me to see? Maybe your child's not struggling with it, but um, it's one of the things that you just have a question about. We'll see. Just to be sure, I was ultimately wanting them to get away from counting on their fingers. Yes. So I have this question, do we ultimately want them to get away from counting on their fingers? And the answer is yes. Um, the reason we ask the questions with one more, one less, so on and so forth, is so they form that mental math um, so that you can ask them what is five and one more and they ultimately know six without having to say one, two, three, four, five, one. And then they got back to counting one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, you want them to get them away from it. Um, I will say about first grade, they become very aware that they're using their fingers. And so instead of doing them like this, they will go to like underneath the table or near their legs so you can't really see them but we ultimately want them to move to um, having that mental math so a lot of things that we do now in teaching math we are teaching them so that they have that mental understanding of math um, where sometimes as parents we want to just say um, especially when you get into like regrouping which we called borrowing um, back in the day but we just want to say, mark this nine out, you know, put an eight there and carry the one. Well, that's not really what's happening because you're carrying or you're regrouping a 10. So the things that we do from 4K all the way up are preparing them to be able to mentally solve math without having to 
pull out a calculator or to borrow uh, or what we call regroup. Um, but yes, ultimately want them to get them away from using their fingers. So constantly asking those questions, giving that visual that they can touch the object that they're using. Good question. Anybody else have a question? You can type it in the box, let me see, or you can just shout it out. And let me just say this, it's not wrong for them to use their fingers because that's where they're gonna wanna start. Um, but we do want to kind of push them away from that to be able to think about it mentally. All right, well, if anyone has any questions that you would rather just ask one-on-one, -on -one, I will stick on for a while. And I thank you for joining us today and I will send a follow-up email um, let's see, we got one more message. Let's see. I would like to, you're welcome. Um, I'll send a follow up email that will link each of the videos that, that teach about what I taught about today um, in the next couple of days. And I'll also send the um, bag of manipulative comma the next few days. Uh, Ashton is going to send out a survey to everyone. Ashton, are you going to put it in the comments or are you going to email it out? There it is. So if you'll look in the chat on the comment section, there is a Google link there. If you will fill that out for us, we will greatly appreciate it. All right, if you have any questions and want to stick on for a minute, I'll hang out for a little bit. If not, thanks again and have a great day.